I've been studying and collecting Flint history since I can remember. All of these items tell a piece of the story, and it's only when you put them together that you understand the big picture of what happened here from a simple two-wheeled carriage into what became the largest industrial company in the entire world. And that story starts with Factory One. If it weren't for this building and what happened here and in the surrounding area, there very likely wouldn't be a General Motors today. This is really the birth of industrialization in America. And anything that's left that we can save and tell the story is so important. Only a few of the original buildings associated with the development of the industry here in Flint actually remain, Factory One being the most important building among them. And it too was at risk of disappearing into time. This is a significant piece of our heritage. We had to do something. And General Motors stepped up and saved this building from further decay. When we arrived here, the building was in disarray. The walls were falling in, the roof was leaking. The building really had a very tough life. The restoration of this project was a tremendous undertaking. It was full of a lot of little offices, and so you really didn't see anything. And so my first inclination was take everything out, just rip it down to the bones, because behind all of that stuff, we started to see this wood structure that was really very phenomenal. I fell in love with it and said, we need to expose that. We need to let everybody see how really beautiful that is. What's important to be maintained and showcased in the building is the building itself, this original structure that we have, the beams, the columns, the brick. And I think they really achieved that. They hit a home run. When we learned that the factory one had been purchased by General Motors, I called Mark Royce. He was very gracious, took my call, and I said, I've got an idea. We have this magnificent archive on Kettering University's campus, which is one of the very, very best collections in the United States of early automotive history. And I said, what better marriage would there be than to place this archive inside of a renovated, rejuvenated Factory One? For many of these items, it's almost like coming home. And I was very pleased uh, that Mark was so receptive to the idea and actually made it happen. You know, this is going to be a showpiece for innovation and what really went on in this area around the industry and the transformation of the industry, frankly. The archive will, will give us a roadmap of what that transformation looked like and when it happened and how difficult or easy it was in some cases and uh, how innovation and technology led the way. The archive has to be more than just a, a storage facility, more than just a vault. It has to be a place of learning. It creates a location in Flint where not just academic researchers coming to a university can access the collection, but also people from the community. We're creating the next generation of entrepreneurs, innovators, and world leaders. And I can't imagine a student not being excited to know that they're in the environment, the same environment that launched the global auto industry. It really is a privilege to have access to such a comprehensive archive and see firsthand what the automotive industry looked like when it was just beginning to come into its own. And what cool opportunity, as I study to be an engineer and perhaps one day work in the automotive industry, you know, study for my tests, work on a project right in that same building where General Motors started. We're gonna be reliant on a new generation of kids really interested in doing this type of work and sustaining America's lead in transforming transportation. So I see that as one of the most exciting pieces of this. It provides them with context that will enrich in their ability to be that group of individuals who creates the next wave of mobility, the next wave of technology. And that's the purpose of this archive and the purpose of Factory One. 
A lot of communities don't have this opportunity. A lot of companies don't have this opportunity. So we're very fortunate to be able to keep this as a reminder, as a story of where we came from.